Welcome to Team Sports Entertainment, the podcast, your one-stop shop for mature sports dialogue. I am your host, Earl Tima, alongside my co-host, my unk, Alan Tima. Before we go any further, subscribe to the channel, like the video, leave a comment below, and also hit the notification bell. That way you know when content is uploaded. The season is here, ladies and gentlemen. The season is here. NBA tip-off, first two games on Tuesday. We have the Golden State Warriors versus the Brooklyn Nets in the late game. The Battle of L.A., if you want to call it that. <laughs> the Lakers versus the Clippers. The Dogs. So we, we're going to start with the, the first matchup. I think it's a very intriguing matchup. The Nets and Golden State. Many narratives. What, what you thinking? Ooh. Durant. Matter of fact, Warriors coming to Brooklyn. Warriors coming to Brooklyn. Mm-hmm. No fans. And Durant. It's coming to play. This is this is his finals. Uh, he's, he's petty like that, man. And Draymond, Durant, Steph, they taking my shot. They looking past me. They won't pass me the ball. All that is coming out in this. Mm. Durant is coming out to drop 50. And if he's looking to score, yeah. he's going to get, if he's trying to get 60, he's getting 40. Yeah, no doubt. So he's yeah. coming. He's definitely coming. And Steph, he's back. He is. Okay. He ain't you ever you ever know him to back down? Not at all. You know nah, he's coming to leave anyway. So start this step. I mean they're not passive aggressive. These dudes are aggressive. They come out. Mm-hmm. Now, those two stars that we're talking about. Yeah. And the, the the dynamic of them at playing together now this is the first season where both of them are playing and they're going against each other um with the drama that took place and we all know the drama that's a whole long story draymond green calling him a you know what yeah right there on live television and basically saying we was doing this before you got here you know what i mean and him going down Trying to help them win their third championship with him, and now he's in his own with his own team in Brooklyn, and to set his, he's so petty, you know, he has to let it be known that listen, I am the best in the league. So the first test on the season opener mm. is against the Warriors, yeah. the team that you would think that oh well it was more like. You're going back to play against your teammates. Nah, he's not going back. And him, he's going back to prove a point to them that y'all need me. That's how petty he is. The, all those championships that we won, them two championships we won, and I was the MVP, but everybody still talking about <laughs> Steph and all that. That's that, that's how petty um, KD is, Yeah, but man. I don't even think Steph is worried about that. Not to say that he's not a talent, KD, because he is who he is. But in the back of their mind, they're going to say, yeah, we won those two rings with you, but the last time we played as opposing teams, we sent you home, came back 3-1. <laughs> that's, and that's so, the point. That's the point that, that Draymond was making to him. You know, when he came over there and, and expecting it to be his team. No, this is always going to be Steph's team. Mm. You can come over here and, and, and score 60 points and be the finals MVP. It's still Steph's team. Yeah. Period. But the beauty about the NBA, you know, in, in the league period or just team basketball is that stars – you know, it is a star power league, yeah. but it's the Nets versus the Warriors. Mm. The question is, we know Steph will show up. Draymond is doubtful. Will he show up? Because I'm going to tell you something. Who, Steph? Yeah. Listen, we're never going to front on Steph. I'm, I'm, never. I'm not the biggest Steph but fan, but he shows up. But one problem that we have now, and that problem is this. Why? Clay is not there to cover him up. Who in God's earth is guarding Kyrie? Oh, no doubt. L- listen, I'm not saying Steph is a defensive wizard. What I'm saying is that you got to defend him, too. He can pull up from the parking lot. Normally, he had the energy and the legs to do that because Clay was the one chasing the point, the dynamic point guards Wait, that he he's supposed hit. to be guarding. Wait, no doubt. The Dames, the Kyries, yeah. and all those dudes. Let's go it, it wasn't Curry guarding them. Mm-hmm. So, of course, he had the energy to sit there, shoot the three, and wiggle his way out on court. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? But now, for four quarters, 
you have to guard Kyrie un- unless there's somebody else that they put on Kyrie. Well, they let's go down their roster. Who would you have Kelly Oubre defending? I would have, I would have Oubre on. No, you're right. I would put Oubre on Kyrie. Yeah, size. Yeah. The reason why, but the reason why I was about to say putting Oubre on Durant is because, um, right before we we started this this podcast, we found out that Draymond is probable for the game. Mm. So if 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 Draymond is actually playing. Of course, I'm putting Draymond on Durant. Let yeah. him get physical with him. You can't guard him, but he, he's a great defender, and he know how to get in people's head. He's going to put the body on Durant, and I don't think that Durant is really ready for physicality. Yeah. And someone at this physicality with a player that can actually move laterally out on the perimeter. And the refs may let them play based on his reputation. Yeah, yeah that's what I mean. Player of the year. So yeah, so now so so if Draymond is is playing and I don't know why he's not playing if it's it's, it's a foot probable. injury or something. Yeah, yeah. It was I think it was a foot injury or something a like that. A foot injury which yeah. would hurt him laterally yeah. and you need to be 100% laterally trying to guard KD. Yeah. So but if like you said going back to to your question, who's guarding Kyrie if Draymond is playing. I'm putting Draymond on on KD, and so yes, Oubre to me would should be the one guarding Kyrie. Yeah. Definitely not Steph. But the problem is this. Well, Kyrie got to defend him too. See, that's the thing. Kyrie has to defend and he someone. He don't play defense either. I don't care who he guard. You can go 40 on him, and you can be on the on the verge of scoring 60. He's not changing the way he played defense. Mm-hmm. So he's not wasting no energy <laughs> on defense. And that's that, okay. So now. But this is the thing. You normally can hide Steph. Yeah. So Steph, who he guarding? Dinwiddie? Because cause if we go by the preseason, Dinwiddie was starting and Levert was coming off the bench. And even if you start Levert, who is he going to guard? Levert? That's so anywhere it go, Steph have to work on both ends of the floor. Unless Joe Harris is starting, and you can put him out there with the shooter. But where Joe, Har- Joe Harris is starting over who? Well, we don't necessarily know Brooklyn's starting lineup. But if we go by what they did in what preseason, they, yeah, then yeah, he's, but Joe Harris is a small forward. He's not a shooting guard. So you, we already know that's locked up. He's not playing. Or, KD is not starting off at the four. He might eventually be at the four, mm-hmm. but he's starting off at the three. So, Harris starting is not happening. We shall see. I, I, I don't know. You just never know what these coaches, man. They be having yeah, a different Steve idea. Nash, we don't know because I don't. We don't know what type of coach he is. But one thing I can tell you, KD is not talking about. Okay, you can start me at the four. Uh, he's, he's too petty, man. Yeah, no doubt. And of course, like him and Kyrie said, they don't. They coach themselves. All right. So if they they don't need a coach. KD is a superstar. I already know he wants to start at small forward. He do not want to start at power forward. All right. So that's the matchup, right? We got Brooklyn and Golden State. Yeah. It's a regular season game. We're excited, and many others are excited because it's the NBA tip-off. Yeah. But in the grand scheme of things, win or lose, does it even mean anything as far as— It's the first game of the season. Yeah. But it's we talking. Listen, we got to talk about it. No, no, I'm not saying it in that sense. I'm yeah. talking about from KD's because you can't get into a person's head. But at the same time, for them, both these you're coming teams, up an Achilles is, injury. That is that serious. If you're a coach, are you allowing him to? How far are you allowing this to go? Because Draymond is a very physical defender as well, mm-hmm. and even though it's a shortened season, uh, Brooklyn is expected to finish in the top two or three. Right? Mm-hmm. You need to protect your players. Well, you got to understand this. That's already mapped out they done got with the trainers and all that and there's a if there's a limit uh, a, a minute restriction it's already in place but you gotta believe that if Duran is playing 40 minutes 30 minutes or 25 minutes he's coming to kill <laughs> Period. Now you're right. Yeah, you're right. Now I'm expecting that too he can put up 50 in his sleep and at the same breath Basically, all last season, Steph was injured. Mm-hmm. He wasn't there either last year. No. 
and people sleeping on them and he don't like it yeah and if they if they okay with that and not coming to make a statement they're not the competitors that i believe that they are and if they're the competitors that i know and believe that they are this game will be like Kyrie against the first game in the first game of the season asking <laughs> when LeBron first came back to Cleveland Kyrie asking is this where the playoff game is like <laughs> yeah yeah this should have a playoff atmosphere it should yeah it should yeah and and the coaches that might want to you know be careful with KD this is the wrong game and they better watch KD cuz KD is coming He's if, if if Draymond is guarding him, he's gonna have to have his full arsenal because Draymond is not no slouch defender. No. Period. So if Draymond is playing and he's 95% defensively of what he's capable of, mm. KD is gonna have to pull out his bag a little bit. No and he might try to do a little too much that was and all that. Issue, yeah. yeah. Right. But he's gonna have to. Yeah. Because you you're not coming out with no let the game come to you because Draymond ain't allowing the game to come to you. Yeah. You're gonna have to show your superstar status to play effectively offensively against a defensive player like Draymond. No doubt. And this is telltale. Like, this is what we always spoke about. Excitement. This, no doubt. This is we're gonna get a chance to see the true Kyrie and KD dynamic. Preseason is a little different. Yeah. KD is expected, as you you stated, to go off. Right. So is Kyrie going to take the back seat and, and let him eat? Or is he looking at Steph like cook food? Like, nah, I need to shine a little bit too, baby. It's, what? it's Kyrie we talking about. <laughs> what does that mean? The earth is flat. All right, but that may be his belief. I don't believe it, but... Kyrie's in a whole nother world. Okay. So you never can determine what he's thinking or how he's... Is, is he ready to buy in? How do we know if he's ready to buy in? Mm-hmm. We don't know if he's ready to buy in for the simple fact that you're going to championships every year with 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 the Cleveland Cavaliers, and yet you're still not happy. Yeah, you're the the the, the number not. I can basically say the number one option, but you didn't have the ball in your hand because if the ball is only in your hand, you're the only option. So LeBron had the ball in his hands, but he's focusing on you. Yeah, you're the number one option, right? Without the ball in your hands, and you still wasn't happy. The problem is the ball is in your hands. And I guess I just got finished telling you earlier how Draymond mentioned that Durant was making complaints about Curry, Steph, and, and, and Clay locking him out of games. So if those two unselfish players he felt was locking him out of games, what do he think Kyrie is going to be doing? That's his man. That's his man until he feel his man is is, is, real, is yeah. not passing him the ball. No doubt. Kyrie don't pass. Kyrie gets his assist for the simple fact of he so talented that he makes his moves and he doesn't pass until he gets in trouble. And he have to make the pass. So how many times you gonna be open, KD? Before it's about their chemistry and the real, if they're really mans. How many people think they got a man until their man is not in sync with them? They don't agree with each other. They are having a different of opinions, and that's where that relationship comes to. Okay, we're gonna see what it's all about, and the way Kyrie thinks, you know, he has. Mm-hmm. You know, different upbringing than most people, and as far as his spirituality and things like that, you know, we watched him go get to Boston and put the sage out. You know, he thinks differently than most people. He's more like the Zen master. Like he thought differently. You know what I mean? That's Kyrie. So you can't never say oh, Kyrie gonna do this. Kyrie, you don't know what Kyrie's gonna do, and that's the question mark on the the Brooklyn Nets this year. Mm. What's can they coexist? Yeah, they them on their podcast joking and playing around is one thing. Yeah. But in the going to war in a game like this, yes. <laughs> Brooklyn 
Warriors in Brooklyn, it's a lot of statements got to be made. Yeah. And now we know it's the first game of the season. What kind of statement could be made? For the, for the dynamic of what's happening right now, there's a statement that has to be made right here. And if the, the names we're mentioning don't realize that, they won't be competing for a championship because the competitive side of you make you come for what all everything that's on top of these this two matchups we know the history the fact that KD just came from there and all that we know the history we know the drama that took place the fact that 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 everybody's sleeping on Steph without Clay all this it, it, and, and in the matter of down the line doesn't mean anything. No, but for statements that need to be set, to me, yeah. All right, so a bunch of narratives, little narratives here and there, the large narrative with KD and Warriors and Steph is back. He has to make a statement. Draymond said what he said about KD and how he felt that KD was complaining that he wasn't considered the best player in the world, even though he beat LeBron in the finals. With all that being Two said. Times. With all that being said, it's only one game, but that's what we're here. We're breaking it up. Who do you got for that first game? Because we're going to move on to the next one. Who do you have? And why? Brooklyn. One sentence answer. Why? Because they got the second best player in the league. All right. So, all right. So now we transition into the game out west, the battle of LA. The number one player in the league. league. Yeah. Uh, Mr. King James. Yes. Going up against Kawhi and the Clippers. Seems like this matchup doesn't have the same, I don't know, luster as last season. They tamed the dogs. They tamed the dogs. The real dogs is getting overlooked for the superstars. Mm -hmm. The superstars showed you who they are. Yeah. And game seven, shooting balls off the backboard <laughs> and all that. So nah, it really don't have why to. Why did it happen, though? Cause, because obviously the individual you're speaking of is never his fault. And that's what I want to get into because there's a lot of narratives as far as this game goes too. A lot of uh, finger pointing. Uh, coaches are gone. Rosters are pretty much still intact with the addition of Trez with the Lakers and Jermichael Green is gone. But this is kind of like the situation with KD. Don't you feel like Paul George has something to prove? Because I don't think Kawhi really... He, he has a championship pedigree to where he's like... He it's, understands like this game really doesn't mean too much but I want to show out. No. Because last year he showed me that. Because anytime he plays against LeBron, he 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 come he's coming to try to prove that he's better than LeBron. But what not? But when does he take a night off when he's playing? All I, the time. Is Mr. Logan? No, 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 no. When he's playing, I think he always comes to play. He's efficient. Yeah, in that he comes sense. to play every time he but comes on the But the Paul George dynamic. They a lot of he things. He always have been come changed. to play too. But he, but he say, he stated that he pin downs and. Picking, not picking and roll, but setting screens of that nature. Now, the way he's talking is if things are going to change. What are you expecting from him well, in this game? Well, how much more can it change? Because the pin downs that he's talking about, that's not all that he did. We know he that. actually ran the pick and roll last year more than, more than ever in his whole career. So, again, that was just him looking for a scapegoat to point fingers. That's all that was. And here it is. His, we know his name. Pandemic P, so he could he probably can score forty on the open night against the Lakers and win the game, just like last year. And then sports on, on Sports Center and all these other they, see he better than LeBron and all this kind of stuff. And they got too many dogs and all this kind of stuff all over again. They got his number. They got the Lakers number. They're not ready. They're getting ready to take over L.A. and all that. We we haven't been through all that from the first game of the season. So, unlike the first matchup we're talking about, the only one that have anything to gain is the Clippers, because if they come out and win Game One, just like last year, what does it mean? And that's the point I was getting at. This year, it doesn't have that. The rivalry, if there was ever one, the, the manufactured one, is, is kind of died in my in my eyes. Want to know why? Because LeBron. Because Pandemic P would show up in the first <laughs> game of the season, and then he would be shooting the ball off the backboard, yeah. throwing Tyrone Lue and everybody else that he can find 
under the bus worrying about if Dame took a good shot or not. No, the shot won't beat you. That's all that matters. But he found if you can find an excuse in the shot that the person took to beat you to send you home in the playoff, the shot went in. And you could find something wrong with that shot. It was a bad shot. Pride. He's a crybaby. Yeah. Pandemic P. Perfect. And he named himself that. All right. So, so what are you looking forward to seeing? Because obviously, you know, we we team LeBron over here. Yeah. So, but these are the things that make me mad with LeBron. This is this is this, and and I can understand the LeBron haters and the people who could care less about LeBron James and tired of hearing his name. This these are the points that they make that that I agree with. And the difference between him and an MJ and all other greats. Not the greats that they try to make, but I'm talking about real greats. Game 1 of the season, I should be saying to you that we should be talking about statements being made. Because MJ always made a statement. Whoa, 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 whoa. before you go any further, he made a statement. The Larry O'Brien trophy. That's what I mean. Is that staple center? Because to him, it's always the long haul. That's why right. he was able to do that in year seventeen. The difference between MJ is the now and the long haul. You're not gonna beat me today or tomorrow. Mm -hmm. LeBron will come in all lackadaisical in Game One of the season, and everybody expecting for him to make a statement like we just mentioned the Warriors in Brooklyn. He could care less. He's about his team and getting the team to where they need to go. So he's not going to come and just dominate the game like he should, like we feel he should. So the, what normally would happen, though, is for LeBron team to win against great teams like that or decent teams, he has to play. He has to be in the game. This year? Nah, different. It's this year. Stacked. I believe, yeah, they're so stacked that those other guys got so much to prove. Schroeder, you got Taylor looking for minutes. You got all these guys. KCP. <laughs> yes, your man. K KCP is coming in with so much confidence this year. After what he did in the bubble. It's, I mean, come on. Matthews, Gasol. We're missing a point. Trez is playing against the Clippers. His energy alone can win you games. Yeah. And you know how inspired he's going to be? He had issues in that locker room no last doubt. year. A lot of things took place that he didn't like. Yeah. And you think he wanna? You think he's going to sit still and allow the Lakers to be lack of in a preseason game. He's a leader in production and his energy. You know, he, he that's. I, I, that's what the excitement is going to be. My problem is, I think this is the, this is the type of game, being LeBron fan that I am, <laughs> these are the type of games that I'm going to want LeBron on the bench. Take him out because he ain't balling the way we know he should be at, with that, that intensity. Yeah. He might be, you know, getting the ball to put to people where they where they comfortable because that's what he does. But as far as scoring when the game is over. But it's important to note too with the Bron situation. Yeah, he does have his moments when he's lackadaisical and he's not in the game. But for all the the box score watchers or the ones who watch highlights, don't allow a, a stat line of 16, 8, and 5 to have you thinking that he wasn't engaged <laughs> if you didn't watch the game. Because AD may have had the night that we needed, or Dennis Schroeder probably went off like you stated before. The roster's still stacked to where he don't have to have the KD mindset coming out with 50 because I'll just get my 17, 18, and this is just one game of the season. I'm, I'm going to sit down and low manage the right way. Right. You see me, but you said 16, 8, and 5. Me evaluating LeBron and his low management management is more like 13, 11, and 10. Tripped up, okay. Trip. I mean, I know that's his goals. He got score. He he got scorers, people that can put the ball in the basket behind him. He was getting triple doubles with limited offensive players. Yeah. You know, other than A D. And, 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 again, we're mentioning a, uh, uh, LeBron, and we haven't even talked about AD. 
What statement will he make? Who they still He's here. Obaka is their A D stopper. <laughs> what? When you're that elite, there is no stopper for you. Mm-hmm. But I believe they think that 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 uh Obaka is that. We're about to find out. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we're gonna find out for sure. Yeah. But I have one other question. Um mm-hmm. Regarding the Clippers, because we spoke on how the Lakers have made so many moves in the offseason, and LeBron finally has a team, in your opinion, that's stacked from top to bottom, right? I can right. agree with that, too. Look at the Clippers and what they lost, and, you know, turmoil was probably there to a certain degree. They lost their coach. Yeah. Uh, Pat Bev is still there. Lou Williams. Obviously, they probably didn't see eye to eye with PG and Kawhi being the old guys or the new guys, and they're getting different kind of treatment. Mm-hmm. How does it play out throughout the course of the year? We can't be psychics and, and foretell the future, but do you see this team in the long run staying together as it is? No, because if you go back and check out all the podcasts going back to when we were doing the Western Conference, I had them down to like seven seed, six or seven seed, something like that. Five, five. I think it was five. No. I had... After Houston. Houston and then Utah. Yeah, it was five. Five, okay. Five. But even then, they were supposed to be yeah. top two. Yeah. I mean, because it's the unknowns. You don't know what leadership it has a lot to do with it. And, um, you know. They added Batum, um, Luke Kennard, but they lost Jermichael. They lost Trez. They lost Doc, but they kind of gained the same guy, Ty Lu, because he kinda was Kind of. It's the same dude. Yeah. That's a, he, I see if he... They, they didn't gain anything. He was already on the bench. So you mean to tell me if Doc was folding on the bench, the assistant coach is there, and every game we watch, he was there. Mm-hmm. He's in his ear, Doc's ear. Nothing you said worked. Doc must be really just my way or the highway. Okay, yeah, I can. Yeah, you I know, can I don't that. see. I don't see much difference because listen. Me and you both are LeBron fans. Ty Lue was in Cleveland. I didn't see a bunch of X's and O's. I saw LeBron Just pulling them the out of everything. Yeah. The problem is he don't have a LeBron over there. Mm. So, okay, now you're making the, the... That's They put so much pressure on themselves from coaching all the way down to the simple fact that they, most of them, or some of them, put, put it on Doc. Mm-hmm. But you were there also. Ty. Yeah. There was no changes made. You mean to tell me you didn't, you couldn't talk to Doc? Now that's that's an interesting point, and I know we're here. We're talking about the two games from over the night, but a lot of teams are playing. Uh, they have different focuses, I should say, because the Lakers' minds are on championships, right? Mm-hmm. And they have the uh, the leadership inside the um, the front office as well as the locker room. But the Clippers are fighting a different fight because, like you said, pandemic P. He has to deal with that situation of folding last year. Mm-hmm. Kawhi, all the reports are coming out how he, the investigation I should say, all of this stuff is going to be looming over them the entire season, so a they W on the Tuesday. to deal with that because the media is going to be all on their backs. Yeah. All on their backs. So it's, it's, it's a different type of pressure because last year, well they're expected to win through the eyes of some people, but now they have added pressure. Yeah. Because now the players, the star players got what they wanted as far as coaching. Mm-hmm. Trez, who another one they tried to throw under the bus that he was the problem, but I can remember him ex- exposing like that. We're not a good team, and we need yeah. to understand that. And with all these, basically, it seemed to me he, and all, was everything that. that's coming out now, all the stuff that's being investigated, all all the, the special treatment and all that stuff. That, that's what Trez was talking about. Yeah. So we'll see. We'll see. All right. So I don't even think I have to ask you this question. Who you got? All right, we're going to move on. <laughs> so, yo, I can't wait, man. I'm excited about this season. Like, All listen. I'm going to say on that note, though, is the only one that has anything to gain in that game is the Clippers. Because if the Lakers come out and win, it means nothing. If, if they lose, it's going to be great headlines for all the, the Laker haters. It's going to be great headlines for them. But other than that, same thing. Last year, they won game one, two. Uh-huh. They won game two, two. So, the only one that got anything to gain out of this game is the Clippers getting a win. All right, that's the difference between the organizations, right? Yeah. 
one plays for the regular season, the other one's trying to get those if banners. If they don't win, it's even more pressure put on them. Well, there you have it. Have it. You heard it here at Team Sports Entertainment, the podcast first. My Uncle Al made his predictions, and I think I'm going to roll with him. We're going to go Brooklyn Nets and the Lakers. Um, hey, NBA season. Who do I have? No. Didn't want them to make comments. Oh, no doubt. We're we going to yeah. get there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is Team Sports Entertainment, the podcast. We want you to engage with us in the comment section. Let us know who you got the first two games of the season and why. We'll reply back. We love all the support. Subscribe to the channel. Like the video. Most importantly, hit the notification bell. We are here, man. Long season. Preseason is over. Exciting season. NBA season. Regular season is back. Yes, sir. I know y'all loving it, man. Thank you for the support. Once again, Team Sports Entertainment, the podcast. We are out of here. Y'all be good. Peace.